take into recognition the days that are set aside to worship him alone and him alone. That is the day, the Sabbath day is the day that God blesses us. The Sabbath day is the day that God sanctifies us. It is a day that is set aside for the religious beliefs, for us to observe it. Are you recognizing the Sabbath day? Do you keep the Sabbath day holy? Do you pay attention to the Sabbath day? The fifth commandment tells us, honor thy father and thy mother. This is the commandment that gives us a promise. But when we talk about our father and our mother, he's not only talking about our biological parents, he's talking about our elders. Why? Because it's a decent respect to our parents. But many children of today, they don't. They count their voices of their parents. Their parents send them, they tell them, no, I cannot go. I am tired. I am going out. I am doing another thing. But the command, the commandment tells us, honor thy father and thy mother, so that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I used to say, the reasons why we have many young people dying is because they don't keep the commandment. The elders are there because they believe in the commandment. And that is why. So what is your own challenge? Honor your parents. When they send you, go. When they ask for something, give them. Give them assistance. Give them the need. The sixth commandment tells us, thou shalt not kill. In other words, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not do anything that is hurtful or injury to anyone's health or the life of anybody. Thou shalt not kill. Life does not belong to you. In other words, Secure it, respect it, value it. It is God's own life. God gave us life. So thou shall not kill. Many of us, in one way or the other, we have killed. We have done so many things that is not pleasing in God's eyes. But the commandment is reminding us, thou shall not kill. Thou shall do no murder. The life does not belong to you. The life belongs to God. Thou shall not commit adultery. It's the seventh commandment. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This commandment forbids the act of uncleanness with the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. The world today is a sinful world. We are lost in the flesh. We are lost in the eyes. But the commandment is reminding us, thou shalt not commit adultery. Lost of the eye. You look at a young girl. You look at a, a young person because of the way he or she dressed. Oh, oh my, my goodness. I wish I have this one. I wish, I wish. Just for, because you are lost in the flesh. The eighth commandment tells us, thou shalt not steal. This commandment forbid us to rob ourselves or to do that is a sinful nature of spending ignorantly. It is a right it is not to take the right of what does not belong to us. But in other words, if we borrow, we must carry. And many of us have lived like this. We steal what does not belong to us. We steal from our parents. We steal from our family. We steal from our friends. We go to somebody. We ask the individual, borrow me this. But little did you realize it has now become yours. Return it back. The commandment is reminding us that thou shalt not steal. The ninth commandment which is reminding us, thou shalt be a no false witness. Do not speak evil falsely against anyone. Do not be deceitful. Do not deceive one another. Do not speak unjust. Do not speak against your neighbor. Speak the truth. No false witness. Somebody has bribed you for the person to go free. The Bible tells us, the commandment is reminding us, it says no to it. The last commandment tells us, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox. Thou shalt not be, we should not take advantage over such people. Because yes, the wife, the husband is not here, so you want to take advantage over it. Because yes, the maid to not do their own thing, you want to take it. It says no to it. Friends, have you been keeping the commandment? Have you been obeying God's commandment? During this period of Lent, I urge you, that we go back in our quiet time and take this commandment and abide by it day and life. This is God's law. This is God's article for us, for us to live our Christian life. And if we do, we have a place to secure in heaven. Amen.
Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Talk on Christianity. Today is another Sunday, a very special Sunday in the life of the church and in the life of every Christian in the life of this nation. We are gathered here again on the special Sunday, Palm Sunday, for Talk on Christianity. Talk on Christianity comes your way every Sunday at this time on GRTS Life. And it's a program that is put together by the Gambia Christian Council Interchurch Interfaith Subcommittee in collaboration with GRTS. Last week we were talking about forgiveness, forget, reconciliation, and we did not complete it. We went as far as revenge and then we ran out of time, but we come back this week on Palm Sunday and we want to finish that last part of um, forgiveness and reconciliation. And uh, we will also talk about Palm Sunday, the significance and relevance of Palm Sunday in the life of the church and of course the Holy Week, you know, leading to Easter when we will celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So dear viewers, please bear with us and uh, stay tuned as you will also need your Bibles. We shall be making references to scriptures. Today we shall start by looking at examples, biblical examples of forgiveness and reconciliation and also forgetting all the wrongs that have been meted unto us or against our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we will look at um, uh, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, what is Palm Sunday? Why do we celebrate Palm Sunday? How were they celebrating the people of old, the Jews and the disciples and also the crowd? What, they were in, what were their impacts and what were the fears of the crowd? And uh, then we will also have uh, Rev, uh, Gurgi Wali, Uncle Wali, to do uh, some translation in Wolof for the benefit of our Wolof listeners and viewers. So dear viewers, without wasting any much time, welcome to Talk on Christianity, and I wish you all a blessed viewing. Stay tuned, and you will be blessed. Before we go any further, let me once again, as usual, introduce the members of the, the panel in the studio tonight. On my uh, far right, I have uh, our anchor, Reverend Junisa, Reverend Sir Junisa from the Methodist Mission. Reverend Junisa, you're welcome to Talk on Christianity. Thank you, Reverend, Fa Reverend Cannon, and we wish that this evening's program will be of benefit to those who are viewing what we're doing. Thank you very much, Reverend Junisa. On my immediate right, we have uh, Uncle Wali Tamba, commonly known as Gurgi Wali. Gurgi Wali, Nyungla Sargal, the program we talk on Christianity today on this very special Sunday, Sunday Dimasi Sorsor. Gurgi Wali. Dear Jeff, Father Jimmy, today, am nañ bek di té ñu ngi xombel di beer u bangxas manam di beer ciono u sunu borom jere jeuf gorgi wali we now go to the other panel member in the studio and uh, on my immediate left i have with me dikin ja dikin lawrence ja from the national director of scripture union the Gambia, National Director of Scripture Union, the Gambia, Dikinja, you're welcome to talk on Christianity. Thank you, Reverend Cole. Um, it's a great privilege to speak on this very August, August day. It's one of the key events in the Christian calendar. Amen. Now we will not waste any more time, but we will talk to ask uh, Reverend Junisa to tell us, um, uh, give us a biblical example of forgiveness and reconciliation in the Bible, which is um, uh, the